All right. First of all, I am Becca and this is Kelly and we are absolutely honored, pretty psyched to be here actually, uh, especially as the founders of One Student, the chance to share with you what we do. Now, we're gonna do a couple things over our brief time together. We're gonna take you through our 10 years of history, which we can promise we can do in under to 18 minutes. We're gonna share with you some of the key initiatives and in our mission of One Student something that we founded on our core belief system and that we can all make a difference. Now, as two soul sisters standing in front of you, because that's what we refer to ourselves as, two soul sisters on a mission, we feel very fortunate every single day to be living our passion because we live our life helping to reduce sexual violence and empowering students to create change as there is no more powerful force than an empowered and passionate student. So many people in the communities we visit tell us stories. They tell us their stories of survival. Most people know someone who's been sexually assaulted, but no one ever gets told, or too infrequently, is that there's something every single one of us can do about it. So we're gonna focus on that today. Every single one of you will leave here today with the knowledge of how you can help reduce sexual violence in every community you're in going forward. And if we do our job right, we'll give you the drive to join us in the One Student Movement. Based on our core philosophy that one sexual assault is too many and one student, one student can make a difference. So before we start talking with you, I'm going to hit talk instead of mute. Now I'm going to scare everybody with the sound. I'm a little louder than you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep talking. We're good. All right, before we scare everybody with the mic situation here and continue uh, to tell you more about our work and how we are, we're impassioned to start the organization One Student, I want to share just a little bit of history about Becca and I so that you can understand where we're coming from and how we got to the point of founding a nonprofit organization to help students enact change in their community and help end sexual violence. So I'm going to take it back to our freshman year of high school and that's when we met. We first met when we were 14 years old in high school and so a lot of the things that you guys were saying we could definitely relate to because I was walking down the hallway and Becca pulls me aside and we're standing in front of Mr. Bucus's third period English class and the only thing that I could see right off the bat that the two of us had in common were the bangs that defied gravity all teased up, waterfall style is what we called it in the 90s. <laughs> Some of you are shaking your head, yeah, they've come back. So now, you know, MC Hammer pants have come back twice, it's all just keeps coming back. And so here we are in 1990, standing in front of Mr. Bucus's third period English classroom, talking about, I'm sure, very deep things in life. And the interesting thing was that Becca and I had absolutely nothing in common with each other other than the bangs. We could not have been more opposite if we tried, but something about us and our friendship just clicked. And from that moment forward, we have been the closest friends, as close as sisters, two soul sisters on a mission, as she refers to. And over the 20 plus years of our friendship, <laughs> God, that hurts. Um, we've learned a lot about each other. We've learned a lot about ourselves and everything that life throws at us has made us closer. We have celebrated some of life's most wonderful moments together and we've all also been through tragedy together. But no matter what we're celebrating or getting through, she's always been my person. For as long as I can remember, Becca has been that person in my life that no matter what happens, no matter what time of day or what I need, she always has my back. And I know a lot of you have that person in your life. And so when I was in college, I was sexually assaulted. And the only reason that I'm able to stand in front of you all today as an empowered, strong survivor is because of my best friend. It's because of Becca. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. And so for us to be able to share our story with campuses all over the country is such an honor and it is such a privilege for me to have the chance to be the voice for the survivors who aren't yet ready to speak. Because my story isn't, isn't that different from a lot of the stories that we hear all over the country from college campuses and high schools. I was dating this guy that I thought I knew and I thought I could trust. And when I realized that I couldn't, it scared me. It rocked me to the core. 
And when I was sexually assaulted, I was a senior in high school and or a senior in college. And the biggest thing that I was I was most concerned about in my life at that point was saving enough money so I could go on spring break with my sorority sisters. I mean, that, that was my goal in life, and that's what I was headed for. And so when my life was turned upside down, and I, came, I became obsessed, obsessed with wondering what people would say about me or what people would think about me when they found out that I was a victim of sexual assault. So what did I do? I didn't say anything. I didn't want anyone but my best friend and my mother to know what happened to me because I was afraid people would judge me. And so when we didn't know where to turn, because there weren't really many great resources that existed when I was a senior in college, 10, a little bit more years ago. And so when we didn't know where to turn to for support, we did what we had always done up to that point. We, we turned to each other. And when we turned to each other and started talking about how we needed to shift our campus culture, I started telling my story to my closest friends, people that I had known for years. I got the courage with Becca by my side, squeezing my hand. I started telling people what happened to me. And then I started hearing stories. They would tell me about being sexually assaulted by someone they knew. They would tell me that they were molested as a child. They would tell me words and stories that they had never spoke before until that moment. And that's when Beck and I said, we can't be silent. We can't push this down. We have to let it out. We have to talk about it. And Beck and I thought, if the resources don't exist, let's create them. And so after lots of research and soul searching and planning and, and we never questions our, questioned ourselves and our ability, which now looking back, we really think, wow, maybe we should have. After a lot of planning and things, we thought, okay, let's do this. Let's share our story. Let's make a difference. Because not only do we need to feel comfortable talking about sexual assault, we need to feel comfortable talking about sex. And not only as a community do we need to feel comfortable talking about violent relationships, we need to feel comfortable talking about what is a healthy relationship? What does a healthy friendship look like? Because we really didn't know, and if we're not talking about this, this then, then we're doing our communities a huge injustice. And so we got our things together and we started sharing our story with our college campus. And then we shared with another college campus and then another community. And it just kept growing and growing. And we would basically talk to anyone who would listen or anybody who would even pretend to listen, right? <laughs> and so now here we are, 10 years later, at a TED Youth event, standing in front of you today, sharing our story and our journey over the years. And like I said, it, it, we are so proud to be able to do that because we know that there are so many people out there that don't have the courage to speak out. And if we can just begin starting those conversations, if we can begin giving students on campuses across the country the tools to enact change in their communities, we know that change can occur. And, and as you guys have seen today, that students, they want to make a difference. We want to empower our communities and to make them the safest places they could be. So Beck and I thought, what if we did this? What if we actually got together and we gave those students, those individuals on their campuses, the tools and the knowledge to help make a difference? If we did that, what would happen? And what's happening is change is starting to occur. Campuses all over the country, students all over the country are stepping forward and violence is going down because students, our youth is empowered to know that it's up to them. We're going to share with you an episode from One Student TV so you can see some of the students, students who are taking part in their communities to end violence, listening to their voices. And I ask just for a moment as you look at them, what will you do? I am one student. Yo soy un estudiante. If the aim is to die. I'm running down and past the yellow house with Joe into the breeze when no one sees. I am a survivor. I am a survivor. I am a friend of a survivor. One sexual assault is too many. One student can make a difference. I'm feeling so small. I 
can be the one. I can be the one. For that, I'll be the one. You be the one. We've been open line every time we work ourselves up. I will work with OneStudent.org to help end sexual violence. I will make sexual choices that I'm comfortable with. What will you do? I am one student. I am one student. Mita un estudiante. I am a sister. I am a brother. I am a survivor. I will create a campus that will support survivors. Against the big sky tonight, tonight, yeah. I will help my friends understand that regardless of what someone wears, how much they drink or how much they flirt, they do not deserve to be sexually assaulted. What will you do? I am a catalyst for change. I am one student. I am a sorority woman. I'm an artist. I am a teacher. I will teach my students to respect one another. I will use respectful language. I will respect my partner. What will you do? I am an empowered survivor. I am a daughter. I am an athlete. I am an honor student. I am a survivor. I am a university administrator. I am a soccer player. I am a sister. I am a lover of languages. I am an incest survivor. I will break the silence. What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? I will educate my friends and family and make sure that they know that it's never a survivor's fault. I will believe someone when they tell me they were sexually assaulted. I will make sexual choices that I am comfortable with. I will volunteer for one student to make a difference. I'll be the one to change my generation. What will you do? One sexual assault is too many. One student can make a difference. Will you be the one? I can be the one. 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 One student dot org. 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 Will you be the one? Please visit one student dot org. shot that episode it was you know you never know what to expect and over a hundred people came from all over to participate to tell their stories of course <laughs> being a nonprofit it was uncompensated so that's even cooler <laughs> but it's amazing how many people are willing to come forward when given the opportunity it goes all back to our philosophy now when we think about the statistics and, and, and the epidemic of sexual violence we think about it kind of as a global view we don't always think about it as Americans but most people don't know that every two minutes in this country, someone's sexually assaulted. Every two minutes. And if you take that number and you combine it with the fact that college-age women are four times more likely to be sexually assaulted, it makes all the sense in the world that we put those students in the driver's seat to end violence. No one should have them at the back of the movement. They should be leading us. And so that's what One Student's all about, putting the education and tools in the hands of the students so they can lead the movement and end sexual violence. Men, women, all different diversities. Kelly and I talk a lot about the reason we talk about these college students. I mean, who affects our politics, our music, our hairstyles, as we joked about earlier? Students. So if we're going to change the world, we have to give them the keys. So when we think about one student, and, and we invite everybody to go to onestudent.org, which we like to refer to as a virtual playground of social action. If you want to do a little social change this afternoon, that's a place for you to go. But even more so, we've got three remarkable programs I'd like to share with you. The first being No Woman Left Behind. It's a bystander intervention program. It's a movement. It's curriculum. And there are chapters all over this country and soon throughout the world. Even more so, we also have the Collegiate Consortium. It's the only leadership program of its kind. We are putting student stakeholders in charge of driving the issues, giving them education and leadership opportunities to see what's possible. And our parents program, because we found a void that parents were being left out of the conversation. Parents of high school and college age survivors, we created a national advisory board for them and their allies. That's what one student's doing, even more so. But what can you do today? We want everyone to know you can leave here to leave your community safer. 
That's the important thing. The good news is so often sexual violence can be prevented, but most of us don't know how. I will learn more about how I can make a difference on my campus or in your community. The first thing you can do is find out about the resources that exist. Most communities have exceptional resources. If you have trouble finding them, you have our oath. We're on tape. We'll help you find your resources. And if they're not adequate, we'll help you fight for them. Now, the next part of that that's even more important is once you know what's out there, it's your responsibility to share that information with anyone who will listen. The second thing we can do starting today is we will always respect my partner's boundaries. It is so important to know the value of people in our lives. Of course, you should express your boundaries and expect them to be respected by both your friends and your partners. But also remember that your partner deserves respect and to always, always honor that without exception. This is important. This is a great opportunity for young people to talk to their friends about the importance of consent. We screwed up. The movement screwed up a long time ago when I was still a little kid. Generations of us were taught no means no, right? The problem is that doesn't teach consent. What we need to teach people is yes means yes. It's not, it's not a challenge. It's yes means yes. We have to remind people that whoever's instigating intimacy, it's their responsibility for a clear and sober yes, not the person who's being pursued. If I see someone taking advantage of an intoxicated person, I'll do something about it. This is the bystander movement. This is the heart and soul of no woman left behind. The thing is, we have to intervene safely. We have a responsibility. And we're not asking you to do anything unsafe. Ask for help. But you have a responsibility to be there. Use your power for good. We can't wait for somebody else to step in. And until this epidemic comes to an end, we have to believe our survivors. So often than not, so many survivors' healing process is slowed down, stunted, sometimes for decades, because we challenge survivors. Believe and support them. Now, our deeply personal story, obviously, and we've shared just a little bit of it with you guys today, has become an incredibly public mission. And the reason that we chose to share our deeply personal story and make it a public mission for everyone to learn from and to grow from is because we did not want what we thought would never, ever in a million years happen to us. We thought sexual assault was, was something that happened to other people. It would never happen to us. I mean, that's what most of us think. We didn't want what we thought would never happen to us to happen to someone else. So years later, we shared our story with more than 300 college campuses and communities, and we get downright fired up when we talk to a campus and students come up to us afterwards and say, well, what can I do to make change? Or how can I talk with my partner? Or can I talk with my teammates about the importance of consent? Or can I do this? Can we create this rally? And we're like, yes, yes, and we get so excited. And, and just to be able to see that is such an honor and a privilege for us. And we hope that a little bit of what we've shared with you all today inspires you. And yes, the 17 to 24 year old demographic, I miss it every day, trust me. Um, <laughs> It's a beautiful space and time, and just because it's one student, that doesn't mean that you have to be a student in school. Because no matter your religion, race, creed, uh, orientation, any of that, we are all one student. And if we can begin to have those healthy conversations about what is a healthy relationship, if we can learn to respect ourselves and respect everyone around us, then we can get to a space and an environment where we can stand up and we can make a difference. So with that power, we have to ask ourselves, what are we willing to do? If you're at all motivated, if you at all believe that you're a part of the solution, that you have that capacity, then go to onestudent.org. Sign the pledge. Share the pledge. Share episodes of One Student TV. Learn about the resources on there. Talk about No Woman Left Behind. And let us know what we can do to make it better. If you don't tell us, we can't make it happen. One sexual assault is too many, but one student can and will make a difference. Will you be the one? Together, change is truly possible. Stand up, stand together, and let's see what we can do. Thank you.